Alright guys, I wanted to make a quick video here showing a fairly simple FM transmitter hack that I've come up with that anyone can do as long as they have a soldering iron, oops, which is falling on the floor, never good. Lower wattage is preferable. This is, uh, I think, a 15 watt. However, you can get away with something like your average 45 watt, but it's going to be hard because we're smarter, soldering very small joints. So if you have one of these, it's always good. You might as well pick one up. They're very useful. Thin, thin gauge solder. This is what, 020, 022 gauge. It's uh, 6040 lead tin. Also very useful. Makes life a lot easier. Unleaded solder sucks. Don't buy it. Uh, flux makes life easy. This is plumbing flux. I ran out of good stuff, or at least it's in the garage. I don't feel like getting it. Just cleaning pad for a soldering iron. Keep a tip clean. And don't necessarily need a multimeter. All we're going to use for this is a multimeter probe. And I'll show you this later because this hack can apply to multiple different FM transmitters if you know what you're doing and poke around inside of them even though they're all slightly different. It's pretty simple generic hack. I'm going to be showing it on this one because I like this one and it was simple. And I'll try and get another one working and if I do I'll put that video up later. Um, so we'll get started. Okay, so this is the uh, transmitter I'll be using for the video and the one I've done. Buy them at uh, Canadian Tire. If you're not Canadian, no clue where you get them. It's kind of an off-brand thing. Uh, but this was very simple to do and I kind of accidentally did the first step of the mod just busting the case open. Now, the first thing we're going to do is Inside of one of these, of course, there's an antenna lead, which was originally soldered there, and it was just a little piece of taped metal on the inside of the case. Bust that off. It's not necessary. The old antenna is not going to be needed anymore. I mean, you could leave it, but you're not going to get the kind of range I'm talking, 100 feet, maybe 15 with the original antenna, but it's still better than what it had. Now, on this one... It's going to be different on each one. My camera doesn't focus down that small. There's a small resistor. I assume it's a resistor. I'm not too familiar with this super modern, like, micro surface mount stuff. It's just a very small resistor right there. You can see the two pr prongs where it used to sit. You're going to want to bust that off on this particular one. There are more of them that look identical. So on your model, might not be in the same place, but it's going to be, you can kind of trace it out by following this. It's going to be in between somewhere where the audio comes out. Like you can kind of find the audio stage on it, and it basically just goes off to ground or something. I think what it does is it taps off a good portion of the signal strength, sends it back to ground, just to drop the signal to the legal limit, because you can only transmit it such a power on FM. I think that's what it does. I'm not a hundred percent sure. So I'm going to show you how at least I found this. First thing you want to do is locate antenna spot. Fairly simple. That gives you a general location of where the uh, audio amp output kind of deal, or RF amp, it's not audio, um, is. And now you can kind of follow it back. And this is where the multimeter lead just makes it easy. You can do it with a wire comes in. What I did is I powered this up, connected it to the phone, with no antenna of course, and then I took, sorry about the lighting, you just can't win on a glass desk, I took my multimeter probe, and I just started poking points behind, on each side of each of these components, right? And with it tuned and turned on to the radio, and when I found the point that was the strongest, which happened to be the back side of that resistor, which it usually will be. I checked it by walking across the house and seeing that I still had a signal. I caught on to it was that. And you can either just snap it off with a screwdriver or heat it up in the middle and pull it off with a soldering iron. And you're going to want to do that. After that, you really just have to go back to the antenna probe or antenna uh, solder point 
and you're going to want to solder on a new length of wire. In this case, I simply used speaker wire, nothing special, just a length of speaker wire. You're going to have fun soldering that little tiny point, like I said, with a big 45 water. So a 15 watt soldering iron is a good thing to own. Very helpful. Now, once you get that installed, you should be good to go. The rest is really just cosmetic. I mean, the way you run it. I've also noticed you don't want to loop the antenna wire back over these little IC type chips in this because it like re-injects the uh, signal somewhere in this circuit it shouldn't be and get some really weird things going on if you put the antenna too close to the wrong component. But the way this sits right now with simply one resistor removed and one extra wire added, I'm getting about 100 feet of distance and I'm going to show you this right now. So let me get this set up and we'll be right back. Okay, so we've got it hooked up and we have it tuned to 1067, which I've missed by clicking it, so I get to tune it all the way back. Very fun, back to 1067, which happens to just be an unused station in my area. You just find the uh, station that's the cleanest and pick that to use it. 1069 works good, 1067, I like it. And we'll play some Cage the Elephant, Ain't No Rest for the Wicked. Got our volume up, transmitting on 106.7. Okay. Come on over here to our receiver, set to 106.7, just unmute it. Plug it in first, of course. Now we're tuning crystal clear, but obviously not much distance. Can't play too much over copyright. We're not tuning a very long distance, but still, the original transmitter have to sit right on top of the stereo to get anything whatsoever at all out of it. This crystal clear sound, beautiful. So now we're going to take this here, without showing off too much of my house, and walk it. Hmm. Just use this so you can see the distance over to the kitchen. Kitchen table, about that distance. Still playing the song. And we should still have a crystal clear signal coming out of our speakers. Mute doesn't work very well on my receiver, obviously. In any case, working perfect. So, we're going to take this a step further. Okay. Okay. The next test we're going to do here is going to be about 100 feet away and in the basement. Going to play the same song again. Make sure it's playing. Transmitting on 1067. Trust me, if I press the button to light it up, it changes the stations. I don't want to go through resetting it. We're going to walk all the way down here, down into the basement, and tune it in on a stereo with an added advantage when you're checking signal of a magic eye tube. It gives you an indication of how strong the signal is. So we're going to tune this to Jesus. Okay, here is 1067. This is 100 feet away. Watch the magic eye. Just to show you how strong this station is. Closes up, no signal strength. We tune into it complete deflection. That's insane amounts of power. It might do 200 feet. And this is done with a $10 FM transmitter from Canadian Tire and about five minutes. 
Easy, easy stuff. A lovely sound. And that's it. Okay, guys, so that's going to end this video. Uh, personal preference, you can remount the back however you want at this point. Do whatever. Run this antenna wherever you want as long as it's not over any of the components. And that'll do her. Remember to subscribe or at least check out the channel if you want to see more videos, upcoming videos about electronics and electronics hacks, maybe even some boat videos this summer, get the hydroplane out, boat motor videos. Um, I'm going to be doing an upcoming video, hopefully, where I try to hack this one in real time so you get to see exactly the process I'm doing. i got to get a 12 volt supply so I can run it in the house. And then I'll do show the whole process from start to finish of using the probe to find the strongest signal. I've lost the probe I pulled off. Um, and soldering in a new antenna and how that's all going to work out. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed and thanks for watching.